One of our most faithful fans, Andres, came to visit us a few months ago, bringing us all sorts of chemical goodies, including a couple of Chinese ping pong balls, which he said burnt really well. And of course, anything that burns is irresistible to Neil, our technician. The interesting thing about this is that although burning a ping pong ball is a fun experiment, it has quite an interesting lesson about many chemical experiments. I've never tried to burn a ping pong ball, and I don't even know if they're all made from the same material, but these particular ones appear to be made out of cellulose nitrate or something very similar. Cellulose nitrate is cellulose from plant material that has been treated with nitric acid and is very similar to gun cotton, the explosive that we've made a video about before. Whoa! That was pretty impressive. Whoa. And because it contains a nitrate group, nitrogen, oxygen, it has available oxygen within the structure to help it burn and nitrogen atoms which can combine to release heat when it forms N2, nitrogen gas. It is also useful because you can easily mould it into smooth shapes, like a ping pong ball. The reason why I think this experiment's really interesting is because it combines both physics and chemistry. In chemistry, the underlying reaction will always be the same. When you burn the ball, it is going to turn into CO2, water and nitrogen gas. But the interesting thing is that as a chemist, you have to be able to distinguish between what is the underlying chemistry and what is the chance physics. And in Neil's experiment, we've got a beautiful demonstration of that. Essentially, he took the two balls, one after the other, and put a gas torch to it, so they caught fire. Ostensibly, the experiments were identical. But in detail, of course, they're not. because he may have touched the torch on a slightly different part on the ball, slightly lower or slightly higher. Because it's in a fume cupboard, the wind might have been blowing slightly differently on the two occasions. So what happens is the way that the flame spreads on the balls are quite different. If you were doing the experiment, you might say, well, it's completely irreproducible. You don't get the same result twice. But the chemical result is the same. You still get CO2 water or steam and nitrogen, but the way the flame spreads is different. And the first one that was done, the, the ball melted and a sort of flaming bit fell down. The other one burnt almost completely away with a, looked a bit like a flaming space capsule or something like that, with the flames coming out one side and all that was left was really a tiny, tiny little bit. One really has to become almost romantic looking at the flames because the way the flame spreads is really beautiful, especially when it is slowed down. You can see the swirling of the flame and how it spreads. And sometimes scientists can be a bit analytical and they forget just how beautiful some of the things are that we observe in the lab. Brady gets really cross. He says, I bring my family into every video. But I think this time I have a real excuse because the ping pong balls were Chinese and ping pong is a fantastically popular game in China. And my mother's cousin, Ivor Montague, who died many years ago, and you can see his picture here, is the person who introduced ping pong as a national sport into China. He wrote the rules for international ping pong. And there's recently been a book published about him, which talks about how 
ping pong became important in the diplomacy between China and the United States. It was all due to my mother's cousin, Ivor Montague. So there is a connection. Mm, right. 